Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 90. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, this is linear regression video number four. We're going to calculate slope and y intercept for our estimated simple linear regression equation. Now, last couple videos, we did some charting and we calculated covariance and uh, coefficient of correlation. We saw how to make this chart. Those are all the scatter points from our x and y variables. So we've been using this data set for the last few videos. There's temperature. Oh, so from a uh, grocery store, we had uh, temperatures on given days and the sales of chicken soup. And so we wanted to see what the relationship was between these variables and make a model that we can use to predict. So we charted. We talked about how when we do the scatter chart, we get our markers. We then can, with the charting engine, create that, uh, use add trend line and get the actual estimated equation. We can even write on the chart, there's our equation. That's what we're after in this video, and the charting engine does that automatically. We also talked about with co covariance and correlation. When you plot x bar and y bar, this gives a visual cue of where the markers are located on the chart and whether it's an indirect or negative relationship or a direct or positive relationship. And the way that works is these are our points. Each one has an x and a y. But if we go ahead and calculate the deviations from the x bar for the x's and from the y bar for the y's, we saw with covariance we could actually take the deviations for x's and y's as compared to their means, multiply them, and it gives us either a preponderance of negatives or positives. Right? And so we did covariance, and we saw that there was a problem with units. So then we calculate coefficient of correlation. This value right here gives us numbers between negative 1 and 1. So if it's perfectly negative 1, then all of those markers are right on the line. Now, that never happens. But if we get something you know, strongly negative near negative 1, then we know that the model will be indirect and that the strength will be pretty good. So for example, Here's our calculations from last video. We got minus 0.84. So that minus number is closer to minus 1 than it is to 0. So that means we have a pretty strong negative relationship. Down here, uh, we I forget what we got. We got 9 point something something. But our relationship was strong and direct. Now here, the deviations preponderance are in quadrant 1 and 3. Anytime that happens, then you get a direct positive relationship. OK, so these are the formulas we used last video. And it was really multiplying the deviations. This calculation right here that was kind of the uh, conceptual driver of why this calculation makes sense. We calculated our x bar, uh, the deviations for the x, deviations for the y's. We then multiply them. For this example here, we see that we get a large preponderance of negative numbers. So when we add it up, boom, we get a big negative number. So at least that tells us that it is an indirect negative relationship. As x increases, y decreases. We saw that there was a problem with the units with that, so then we calculated uh, from sample covariance, we calculated that, and from that we calculated coefficient of correlation. Now, slope and y-intercept are what we're after in this video. It's going to use the same conceptual trick. Here's our formula for slope. But notice what's in the numerator. Deviations for x and y multiply. Now, why this particular formula here? Uh, this is going to be what's called uh, b sub 1 or our slope of our line. We'll actually use the result of this to then get, uh, use the slope down here, plug a y bar and an x bar in, and that will give us our y intercept. These are actually the, the methods of calculating in the cells, not using our little charting engine. So we have our numbers, and we can use them for our model. Now, why this particular formula here? This is the 
uh, our textbook here uses these variables to describe what's called the estimated simple linear regression equation. This is what we'll use for predicting. Predicted y equals y-intercept plus slope times x. So b sub 0 is the variable we're going to use for y-intercept and b sub 1 for slope. In other textbooks, you might have seen the, f the formula y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the intercept. Nevertheless, this is the equation we're going to, uh, the variables we're going to use. Now again, these are the formulas down here for slope and y-intercept. How did they get this? There's a great uh, proof on page 667 using differential uh, calculus in our textbooks that shows this formula. We want to minimize observed y minus predicted y. Now that particular calculation, just take any sub i observed value and then the predicted value. If you subtract those, it gives you the residual. Now let's see what that means visually. This is our estimated line. But notice, all of the markers are not directly on the line. If they were, in this case, it would be negative 1. Perfect indirect negative relationship, but they're not, right? So our, this is a way of estimating when we create this equation for the line, we can then use to estimate. But the difference between the observed values and the predicted value. So the predicted value will be right exactly there. The distance between those is, are called the residuals. So some of them are going to be below the line. Some of them are going to be above. So what this proof does on page 667 is it takes all the residuals and it minimizes it. Uh, and actually, it take, we take this formula, substitute in this, because that intercept plus slope times x is actually equal to the y hat. So you then you plug this in here, and the proof minimizes this to estimate the slope for this line. All right, so we don't need to worry about that proof, but do at least take note that uh, we've talked about a bunch about how multiplying the deviations kind of makes sense as a good measure for whether it's going to be direct or positive or indirect or negative. All right, so this, these are all the calculations we did last video, right? Deviations multiplied. Now let's come down here and calculate our slope. We also, because we calculated standard deviation for x and y longhand, right? We already had this value. These are the deviations for x squared, and then we add them. And that's exactly what we're going to use down here in the denominator for slope. All right, so you're ready. Once you have all these calculations done, it's just simply for slope equals sum of the product of the deviations divided by x deviations, uh, sum of x deviations squared. Boom, there is our slope, minus 100.56, just as we got up here. But again, this is in the cell, so now we can use this for calculating, right? All right, now we can calculate y-intercept. Uh, this is our formula right here, right? So we take the y-bar, subtract from it. There's our slope times our x-bar. Control-Enter. And there is our y-intercept. Once we have our slope and y-intercept, now we can create calculations based off of those two things. So here's, we want to take an x value now of 75. 75 degree day, we want to estimate what our chicken soup sales are going to be. Now, actually, it's helpful if we come down here and type out using slope and intercept. Let's type out our formula. I'm going to type y predicted equals y intercept, and that's 11,000. 436 and 17 cents plus and then we're going to put a minus 100 it's a 100 56 times our x so that'll be our model so there we go 
y predicted equals 11,436.17 cents plus, and I put the minus there, right, plus a minus. We could actually change that and just leave it as a minus if you wanted. Now I have a fancy little formula here. You could actually create this formula. That is a big, horrible formula if you want to. Uh, download this and look at it, you can. That, the advantage to make it using a formula to create it is that then it's linked if you change any of these inputs, that updates. But no problem. There's our hand typed out formula. We can put any x here. We'll create a formula here that will tell us what our estimated sales should be. So equals the y-intercept. Again, we're using this as our model. By the way, these are this is from sample data for so this is a sample statistic for y intercept, sample statistic for slope. Those are point estimates for our population parameters. We don't have all the data, just some of it, right? Our sample. All right. So that we're going to use this model here. Slope plus I'm sorry, intercept plus slope times our particular x and there we go. 3000 $894.25. So that is what our model predicts. That is the predicted y. Now, we did these calculations longhand based on the calculations from our last video, but certainly, just as we saw, there's stdev.s for sample standard deviation, covariance.s for sample covariance, and Pearson, named after Carl Pearson for coefficient of correlation. There is There are functions for slope and intercept. So what do you think the name of the function is? They named this one smartly equals slope. And we talked about last video how some of the functions related to linear regression explicitly say direct, you know, which y, whether that y come first or x is. This is one of those that says the y's come first. So I highlight the y's and then the x's. Oh, look at that. I didn't have to go through any of that. However, understanding, you know, especially this column here, how you multiply those deviations does help us understand that the model seems to make at least a little bit of sense. All right, and then y-intercept, they called it intercept. Intercept, known y's, comma, known x's. And there we have it. Not only that, but there's an actual function that will, without calculating slope and intercept uh, specifically like we did, and then making a formula like this, there's a function called forecast. Now, the forecast is dependent on the fact that you actually have all of your data in the cells, your x and y's from your scatter chart, and it's called forecast. And notice it says, give me an x, and then known y's and known x's. Here's our x. Remember, this is a model. We're saying, I want to estimate what the sales will be if the temperature is 75 degrees. So that's our particular x we're throwing into the model. And then by giving it the y's and x's, it'll calculate slope and intercept. So here's my y's, comma, and here's my x's. Remember, the rule of thumb is if it tells you the order, right, then it's easy. The functions like uh, covariance.s and Pearson, they don't say, say, array 1, array 2, but you know, just get in the habit of putting y's in first and then x's, and it will be, it'll work out. And there we go. And notice what's beautiful about this is I can type, type whatever I want in here 88 degrees, and that's what the estimated sales sh should be 45 degrees. Ah chicken soup sales, uh, we would estimate that on a colder day. Uh, from our sample data, it says we should have larger sales. 71, 4,296. All right, um, let's look at one other example. This is the same two examples been using now. It's temperature and ice cream. So we have our, our data. We will just use our functions for this one. So covariance equals covariance dot s. Array 1, array 2, I'm putting in the y's first and then the x's. All right, we know there's a problem with units for there, so we'll do coefficient of correlation equals Pearson. y's 
and then excess. This will give us a number between minus 1 and 1. Ooh, 0.95. So that's a pretty strong uh, indication that this is direct, and it's a very strong relationship. Correlation is going to tell us strength and direction. It is not going to tell us causation. Now, R squared, we'll specifically talk about whole, our whole next video will be just about that. But we know that this is a measure of the goodness of fit uh, for our model. And it's simply R squared, which means coefficient of correlation is R, R sub xy. And so we simply square that, and it gives us coefficient of determination. Uh, we could do that right there. Actually, I'm, I meant to show you the uh, function equals r squared. Right? If it's just if you have co correlation already, it's just as easy to just square it. I'm going to take all of the y's and all of the x's. That will give us the same thing, 0 0.90, just as we got on our uh, our chart here. The slope equals SL. O P, known y's, known x's. Y intercept equals intercept y's x's. So we know just do the y's first, then the x's, and all of the functions we're looking at will work just fine. So those are, and just as we got up here, right? About 112 and about 3,354. And finally, we can just straight predict, given a data set like this, using the forecast function. Hey, there's our x. We want to say, if it's 85 degrees out there, what do we think our estimated sales for ice cream will be? Known y's, known x's. You know, I kind of like using slope and intercept and, and then see what the slope and intercept is over forecast, but nevertheless, it'll uh, it will get get us get the job done. I mean, slope understanding what the slope is, because for every one unit of x, that means estimated increase. This is a direct relationship. So as x increases, y increases. So for every one temperature, it looks like you know about a hundred, a little bit more than a hundred and ten dollar increase in sales. Y intercept. And that helps us uh, for not using the forecast. Well, it tells us. What does it tell us? Where the line crosses. Remember also that if you're going to use it for predicting, uh, you want to uh, stick with these values here. Anytime you start going above, meaning here are we have a min and a max here. Anytime you go outside this range, uh, the relationship may look different, or you might have to use a different model. But over this range. Uh, from our data points. It looks pretty strongly direct and linear. All right, so in this video, we looked at slope and intercept. Next video, we'll talk in great detail about r squared, or coefficient of determination. See you next video.